Um, you know, what makes really, when you look at Team Lillard, um, there's a lot of different Team 7-on-7s seven right. out there, a plentiful <laughs> amount of ones region, regional-wise. Yeah, all um, over the country. But what makes your organization different from the others there in the football, uh, when it comes to football development landscape, you know, what is that like? What I mean, I, I don't know if I can say it just makes us different because I don't know what all other, you know, I don't know what goes on behind mm -hmm. closed doors, but. For you, your for team, us, for your I know that we care. I know every single coach is invested. Uh, I know that uh, it's built solely around, it's built solely with the purpose of being genuine, uh, being hard work, and it's not based around trying to create money and just get a whole bunch of money from people that like we really care about investing in the kids and their future and their life and we want to help them like i think the whole ultimate goal for us is just helping them like we don't want to just go win tournaments we don't want to just play in games like we want to help you prepare for college prepare for life prepare for college camps when they come just be prepared for everything that's coming and and in the meantime, we're going to get a scholarship. We're going to go to college. Let me ask you this. Does it sometimes when you talk about parents, um, you know, they're, they're wanting the best for their children and they're wanting the best for them <clears> as far as also life lessons, you know, mm -hmm. involved. But sometimes, you know, the, there are challenges within that. You know, sometimes, uh, to be real, sometimes they have uh, one parent in right. their single parent home, home life. Um, or it's a situation where maybe that that kid can't afford cannot afford exactly um, that. Do you ever run into those challenges, and and, well, yeah. and how influential <laughs> is that for you, your coaching staff? And honestly, that's kind of the reason. That was one of the reasons I, I started the program as well because I had a lot of kids who I trained and worked out who would say that you know they were paying X amount of dollars and they just parents mm -hmm. said they weren't doing it, but they wanted to play. And I was like, well, I have a I have an opportunity to create a lower budget by getting some products and things like that at a lower rate. And I don't need money to get help. I don't need money for you to play. Like as long as you can come work hard and maybe travel and stuff like mm -hmm. that or show me other ways, write papers, essays, or whatever I could think of or keep high grade point average, then we can work through things. You know what I mean? We can find ways to make payments and stuff like that. But we just really want to focus on growth and don't let financial burdens be the reason that you don't have the opportunity that others have who can afford it. I mean, I think the thing too is that when you talk about time spent, right? Uh, time is such an important factor when you're talking about kids right. uh, investing that time with them because sometimes it can be if you have a dual working home family life right. or to both their parents are working, they don't get sometimes they, a little bit of that. They you don't know? really feel the, they don't, you, the kids want to know that you care. Like the biggest thing I learned is that these kids want to know that you care. Everybody is walking around with a big wall up. Right. And thinking that they have to do it on their own, they need to grow up now. And it's like, be a kid, you know, ask for help, ask questions, seek for information. Like, don't just walk around thinking nobody wants to help you. And it's crazy that people don't show they want to help. So I really wanted just me and the staff and the people around us to just show that we cared and to show that we wanted to help. And I mean, and we got guys getting high grade point averages. Oh, there you go. And getting yes. scholarships. And, having a different approach at life. So, so, so it's kind of been working. So there's been some walls you've had to bring down with oh, times, yeah. right? Yeah, with a lot of kids. long talks, long talks. We have a lot of, and it's not to say like, you know, inner city or outer city, but we have a lot of kids who have a lot of responsibility, go to work every day, mm -hmm. help at home, pay bills. And I think a lot of people take that for granted that kids are really living adult lives. You know, I have one of my kids, my, no parents are around, you know, so. Wow. It's just, you never know what's going on. So you have to ask those questions. You have to let them know it's okay to open up. And then when they open up, you have to be willing to, you know, talk back and respond. You right. can't just, oh, you, too much going on. You have to respond. And when you respond, now they see that it's okay and that it's not a normal behavior, but people care. So. Tell me a success story though. You may have a couple that a success story of a of one of your kids that have left maybe Team Lillard, but have come back and really maybe checked in with you. Hey, coach, you know this is what I'm doing now. Uh, you know any success stories that you've kind of noticed with some one of your kids uh, or anything like you can think of? I can say maybe Marcus Cunningham, MJ Cunningham. MJ Cunningham. I think uh, he's a kid. Um, he didn't really put a lot into football. He just was naturally gifted just because of his basketball background. And uh, he came to Team Lillard, and, and I told him, like, you're not playing quarterback. You play oh, automatically you're like, you play quarterback. <laughs> you're playing linebacker. Right. And I would send him texts often just to let him know, like, just 
challenge him, and he responded. He, he showed up every time, he was on time, and he worked hard. And he's turned himself into one of the top linebackers in the West Coast. He just committed to the University of Oregon, mm. and just three months ago, he was unknown. And wow. he put in work, he got his grades together, he started working out, and when he, put on the, when he got on the field, it just showed. His natural ability turned into like, real talent you know what i mean yeah we're going to talk a little bit more about those 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 kids that you have right. there we'll get into that but i think the thing is too is that what is it that your that the parents of these kids what do they like about your organization because again we're talking about team lillard the organization and we want to promote that right. um and and that you know you you have a special organization going on have, have what what kind of uh parent feedback have you gotten well a lot of the parents just love the fact that we express real interest in the boys we don't just play football and then that's it that's it yeah. we haven't had a tournament in I say three two three months and I keep in contact with 80 percent of the kids and if I don't whoever their position coach was I, I continue to remind them like I mean, check on this guy mm -hmm. check on that guy because the goal is to go to college and they still have a whole another year of high school a whole summer to prepare for so it's not like oh June is here we're done like we're doing work that doesn't uh, consist of practice it's just mentoring now we just stand on their mind reminding them what's important and trying to make sure those habits that we worked on carry over into 12 months a year instead of just the five months we together so a lot of that is just just stand in contact with them so the parents love it because we kind of extra voice right and i mean the thing about it is that have you noticed um about that when you're when you're talking about these parents have you been able to see how they um, give you this feedback and it is positive um, and that you know they keep coming back right it's the funniest thing is just like it, it turns into a point where the parents be like can you call him because he just <laughs> and it's like dang I feel like I'm kind of like now you're you know, the now, parent exactly <laughs> now I'm the parent but it's just it's when a parent understands that their child sees an outlet and if you see this as an outlet then know that there's accountability that comes from an outlet so now that gives me a chance to say why are you doing this if you know X, Y, and Z? And they look at me and they know I've come at them in so many other ways that it's real, it's raw. It's not like I'm trying to be mad, I'm not yelling at you. I give you love all the time, but today mm -hmm. we're going to talk about what you need to fix. And they like, you're right, Hugh. Yeah, I mean, the coaches, and it's funny, when you talk about assembling that, right. uh, you know, a variety of coaching and a flavor, mm -hmm. right? Right. They each have different experiences that they experienced through their, their life of football that they can maybe help that kid mm -hmm. be a forward thinker. Because mm -hmm. because it is that you're talking about now, but it's also you have to think forward. Right. As far as, you know, because again, yeah, maybe they're talking about grade school, whatever, but you're going to high school, you gotta be thinking about the next level right, right. away, right? Right. You can prepare for, um, like I tell, it's crazy you said that, prepare for the next level, because my little, one of my little cousins are in town right now, mm -hmm. and he's an eighth grader, and I asked him, I'm like, what you getting ready for? Yeah. He was like, I'm getting ready for eighth grade. And I was like, you're getting ready for varsity. You know what I mean? Right. I just started telling him, like, you're getting ready for varsity. He was it's looking, a mindset. And he was looking at me like I was crazy, but yeah. I was like, you have to be prepared for what you don't see. You know what I mean? Like, put yourself That's on so the true. highest level. Don't put yourself where you're supposed to be. Or where like, you're at now. Yeah, like, no, you know? I want to be, be where you are. Like, right. you know what I'm saying? Chase what you want to be. So just getting in a mindset of not putting a cap on what you want and mm. what you want to be and stuff like that is kind of the basis of what we preach and just be as big as you can be. So now we're going to get to those players. <laughs> yeah, I tell you, we talked about one of them, MJ Cunningham, three-star yeah. linebacker yeah. who just committed to Oregon. Yeah. Nobody had him on the radar at all, Nobody. Which, which you find surprising. Yeah, and, it's, and you'd be surprised how many kids are like that in Oregon. It's a lot, it's a lot of talent. Is it here. people that just miss this? I mean, it's we always talk about on the Fat Show pipelines, you know, mm -hmm. when we talk about, you know, the different regions, Texas, you know, maybe the Northwest. I mean, in a sense, we're going to highlight that. But, you know, you're talking about California. You're talking about uh, the Midwest. You're talking about the, the South. So, again, there's a lot of hotbeds of talent. But sometimes even in the Northwest, that's being missed and overlooked here in Oregon. Well, I'm not from here. So, at first, I didn't think there was a lot of talent here. And, and just from the last year, mm -hmm. there's so many kids who just don't put in the effort because it's raining all the time or nobody's spending that time to help them. Mm -hmm who help the kids who can't afford. That's the best way to say it. The kids who can't afford, nobody's putting a plan together for those kids. Right. Because it doesn't have financial return. 
So that's, ah, you bring that. It's a very interesting. You bring that up. Exactly. Yeah, if there's yeah. no financial return, nobody wants to be involved. Everybody um, wants where something to be involved with something they can gain from it. So mm -hmm. I kind of take the approach. I used to call myself the ghetto trainer because as long as you come work hard, we can work. Mm -hmm. And that's why I kind of you know turned into what it is now. But nobody wants to help the kids who who can't bring money to the table. So what do you find as a challenge with these kids now these days? I mean, I, I can think of one probably the video games. You oh, know, yeah, that, uh, phones, you know, phones and social things of that sort. Media. So you have to really work with them to say, hey, look, it's time to work. And just, just expectation. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? I don't think they expect great things, all of them. I think they just mm -hmm. are comfortable with the norm, mm -hmm. whatever the norm is. They just mm -hmm. want to get there, and then it's good. They mm -hmm. don't want to just keep going. And, and if they do, they don't want to take the steps. They want to do the shortcut. They want to go Google the answer. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And, and opposed to when we were growing up, we couldn't Google nothing. <laughs> There's no you Google. had to figure it out. Right. And when you figure it out, you learn from what you go through trying to figure it out. And nowadays, everything is just right in your face. So that's the biggest problem. It's yeah. Keeping their attention. So let's start with the uh, one of your kids, uh, four star. We talked about MJ Cunningham, right. but a four star, uh, you know, athlete, uh, Braden Lindsay. Now right. this is a. Uh, he had recently flipped his commitment from Notre Dame to Oregon. Right. Um, and this kid, what is it about him that's so special? Speed. Speed, okay. Speed. And again, he's going to Oregon, so I mean, right. that's speed there, right? That boy. But what is about, you know, his speed and what else? I mean, he's just a good kid. He's an ultra competitor. And uh, this year was the uh, first time I got to really get to know him. I've heard a lot about him, but I wasn't involved. So with football in Oregon, so I didn't know him. Mm -hmm. And he's just a, he's a great person. He, he cheers on the team. He's a leader. He's not a follower at all. And he's mm -hmm. just, he's a humble dude. He works really hard, competitive, but he just understands what he does well. I think he's one of those kids you find who just, uh, he's comfortable in his skin. Like, he's not going to step outside of his box to be something he's not. And the earlier you can figure that out, you find oh, people yes. like him who can, be prepared for college, know where they want to go, make decisions. and Decisive. Exactly. He's you know? very decisive. You know what wow. I mean? He understands how to articulate things. He's, in, he's, in, he's an impressive kid. Now, were you, off the field. were you on the inside of a little bit of a, hey, I may be flipping from Notre Dame to Oregon? Uh -huh, no, nah, man. No, 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 you had up. no input of that. I leave that up to the family. <laughs> okay, man. His okay. Dad, his, dad, his dad got him under, you know, his dad got him under control of his family, and, and he gets it. He can make decisions. So he, so. Comes, from, he comes from a good, a good foundation as oh, well. Oh, yeah, really good foundation and solid, too. Yeah, solid. That's which is important. You got a right. good little mix. So uh, another one we talk about is the latest commitment, uh, Jake Ducart. Now, he committed to... Civil War, you yeah. know, the Oregon State Beavers, yeah. uh, a quarterback standout, but also a baseball star. Yeah. This guy's quite, quite a kid. Jake is a, Jake, yeah, I call him Dookie. Dookie, yeah. okay. I told him, I called him, I told him he couldn't change his name until he got, got better. <laughs> but I met him, uh, he was actually one of the first kids I met when I broke my leg. The first quarterback I ever started training. Really? Uh, wow. And he was a sophomore, the backup at Lake Oswego, and we just started working. And it's just his approach was always business. You know what I mean? You never could get a gauge on how he felt. Mm -hmm. But he just was, he's always ready. And, he's a worker. He's a worker. Like, yeah. he's just a, a, a man's man. Because you know how sometimes with, you know, some of these kids is that they have the ability, right? Yeah. They come in with ability. They come in with, with, with all of these as a package. Right. But then there's some kids that really have to put in the work. Yeah. They don't a, have that ability. He's a naturally. worker. He's a worker. And, uh. He he's always had the demeanor, but he quite didn't have the quarterback mentality yet. He was really, he was committed to Arizona State for baseball oh, when wow. I met him. So okay. he's locked in baseball guy. And over the years, we've uh, developed a good relationship. I like to call us friends just because he's like the first guy I started with. But uh, he's man, he's grown about four inches since I met him. He's about six three now. Oh my word! And he's like he's ready. Like he's just ready. He's just wow. He's wired differently. A lot of these, it's about six of these guys on my team who just, it's like they had a plan and they've graded and they, <laughs> yeah, and they stuck they, to they it. They stuck like, to it and ran with it. Yeah. Dude. And and Oregon State is getting a good, 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 good kid. Oh yeah, really good. And he's coming in. Definitely. Good foundation too, family wise. Oh yeah, his dad Derek. Oh wow. Text me out the blue. Make sure he works. Oh, there you go. Make sure he you works. So you got support from family. Oh, that's yeah. great. Definitely have to. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Another one is uh, some in Oregon have heard of this name, last name. Uh, Trey Lowe, four-star athlete, athlete right. uh, out of Jesuit. Yeah. Uh, his brother Keenan Lowe yeah. played for Oregon, also went to Jesuit. Um, but he has committed to the Washington Huskies. Um, so this is a four-star athlete. Now, tell me, what is it about uh, that makes him different? Now, you knew Keenan. 
Yeah, as far as Trey, what yeah. makes him different from his brother? Well, I never really met Keenan. Like I told you, I'm from the Bay Area, so I've I've talked to him on Twitter back oh, and okay. forth a little. He's he was in the Bay Area with the 49ers, I think, this earlier this spring. Okay. But uh, from what I heard, Keenan was really fast. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Really shifty and a good receiver. But Trey is just Trey's just a different guy. Like, right. He doesn't talk a lot. You won't you won't know who he is in the crowd. He's quiet. You won't know, if we were in the room. You would not Trey Low. You would not know Trey Low is Trey Low. And I like that about him. You can't really read him, but he's just ready to go fight. Speed, speed, strength, quickness. Wow. He's like he's an he's an impressive guy. So well. Chris Peterson has a has a good good kid on. on oh, his he team. has he has good family too. I know. Yeah, he's coming in to play right away. Wow. Like, he's okay. not coming. To play. Okay. Trey 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 was unguardable all spring, all spring. He he played run uh slot. He played Z receiver with us. I've never mm-hmm. seen him run a route, and he played tailback all high school. Came out and just ran every route, just, just untouchable. What makes these four kids, you know, and and I call them, you know, I call them your kids in a way mm-hmm. because you're you're helping them, teaching them, but they're growing, right? right? But what makes what's one piece that's interwoven between them? What's what good quality could you say interwoven between all these four? I can all four of them definitely are furious competitors. Okay, furious like. They won't back down from nobody. They won't shy away from a moment. They're ready for whatever. Like mm. Marcus, Braden, Trey, and Jake will all ask for the ball and for the last. They won't shy moment. away from it. They won't shy away from the moment. And so, I know that. Yeah. I know that. So was that, was that something that you knew that they had, or was that something that you were able to I build learned within it. them? I learned it. Okay. Just from going through situations where you know it was crunch time or mm-hmm. tense situations. How do you respond? Who wants to be the person to say, "Hey, give me the ball." And we had a lot of guys like that. <laughs> you can find them. We had find a them, lot right? of guys like that. So it was it was tough juggling. In those that. moments, you find out who those kids are. Yeah, and you run and see who's built for it. So wow, okay. I was impressed with those four guys for sure. We had a lot of other guys who were just yeah. Tell me a little bit more about some of the other kids that you're kind of working with right um, now that that are standing out and, and have they made commitments yet or, or anything? Well, the school? guys who we had, we have those are the only guys who have committed. Uh, okay. We have Malachi Salu. He's okay. a linebacker from Central Catholic. Okay, he has a Hawaii. Oh, okay. Air Force and no Hawaii Army and Navy. I'm oh, gonna cool. offer him a scholarship. Uh, he's probably going to end up getting a couple more. Mike Noyle from Madison High School. He's mm. a shifty slot receiver. Very, very competitive. Ultra competitive. Height. He has, he's about five eight. Okay. Five nine. So he's quick. He's a shifty guy. Yeah, okay. Uh, he has an offer from University of Idaho. Oh wow. Kaiway Natasa Westland. Product. Okay. He's probably one of the best two-way players in the state. He's gonna. You're gonna hear a lot about about him this year. Uh, he's about five ten. He has an offer from Air Force. Oh, okay. Air Force. Amir McGee. He also goes to Westland. He, he's a running back. He's a really, really stout kid. Mm. He's a really stout kid. <laughs> uh, he yeah. has an offer from Howard. And then uh, we have a kid named Deshaun Neal. Oh. He's out of Hermiston, small town, but he is like. He is the real deal. He will, a diamond in the rough. He, I mean, really, he is seriously. a diamond in the rough. Wow. Literally. Like, he will, whoever gets him will be very lucky. Wow. And uh, we have a lot of guys. Vincenzo, uh, Brad Bickler, Michael Terrace out of Vancouver. He's a quarterback. Mm. Simon Thompson, he's a 2019 kid out of West Salem quarterback. He'll be a, he'll be a really, he's a 4.0 kid. And he's like a track star. Do you find any uh, of the coaches? Do they come time, sometimes come by and talk to you? Do you, they or ask for tape or ask for anything from you? Not really. Sometimes uh, you get a mixed vibe from certain coaches. Um, certain coaches really like it because they get to know their kids are doing something. Mm-hmm. And then some coaches, you know, they don't want their kids involved because it's not what they teach in their program, the tradition, and stuff like that. So you. It's about like communicating with the coaches, and and I'm definitely going to do a, a good, better job at that this summer. Just reaching out and letting them know what we're going to be doing, what would they like for them to be learning, and stuff like that. So you get a mixed vibe from different type of coaches, but for the most part, it's pretty cool. Hmm. Um, now, so for you and and your coaches, what is the next vision as far as Team Lillard uh, f- um, football? Well, seven. On seven? If I can comfortably say this, this year we kind of didn't we didn't have a plan. Okay. We just wanted to help out, and I reached out to a couple of guys who I felt can have a passion to help kids and wanted okay. to see people get better and move forward. And we just worked it out, and uh, it worked out for us. 
So this year we plan on expanding a uh, eighth grade team, maybe a ninth grade or underclass team, and then in a twelfth grade two thousand nineteen team elite. That's currently, team. what what is your team now? I we mean. just have a black team and a silver team. Okay. So we only had two teams, but we want to jump into middle school, kind of prepare for guys to create a full program so we can mm -hmm. go into high school and guys can be like, oh, we've been with Team Lillard since eighth grade. Oh, and wow. Okay. continue to grow every year. And now we know going into high school, this is the standard to get out. So now we don't have to wait till guys are in the 10th grade. Mm -hmm. We look at a transcript and we're like, oh, you need to fix this, fix that. So starting from eighth grade to help us create a full program and that's kind of what we what we lean into. And, and so going back to those coaches is is that they have you have a couple from Florida, you have a couple from you know maybe yeah. the Arkansas area. All I mean, so you place. got them all over. So really, do you see a, a vision maybe five years down the road? We'll just say five years or so or less that where you look at a regionalization uh, going on with your your team. I definitely uh, I definitely would like that. Uh, it wasn't a part of the plan, like I told you. So I think just following up with the next plan mm -hmm. and dominating that. Mm -hmm. and then following up with the next plan, which would be probably going towards the Bay Area, Northern California, something like that, just so I can give back to where I grew up at right. and helped a lot of the kids who are in the exact same situations as me or friends that I had who couldn't play sports or couldn't do things or didn't never get on a plane or never been out of their own neighborhood. So that's kind of the next step. You I want to bring it back hometown. But, exactly. But then again, you know, you look at some of the other things like, you know, say Nike has their opening mm -hmm. uh, where they have people at the campus and grabbing people, right. players from all over. Um, but I think, again, growth is so important uh, when you're talking about your organization. So it's good to have a vision in, in what you do. Oh, yeah. It's good. Definitely. I'm definitely, um, like I told you earlier, this year we had a couple kids came from different places to come play with us just because they wanted them to be a part of Team Lillard. Oh, you, had one, we, you had one in the Northeast coming all the way from like, had, Delaware? Man, no, yeah, from Delaware. Delaware we had a yeah. guy coming from Vegas and California. So this wow. year, I mean, it was just because they wanted them to be a part of Team Lillard. Just, See? You know, we love what you guys represent. Right. And, you know, we love your, you know, all of that stuff. So now it's just putting a plan together to where we can really infiltrate and just create a big program and have a system going and cycle to where we can just plug it into college. And then hopefully maybe we get to the pros from college. Wow, that's a, that's a great great goal. Now, how is your younger brother, <laughs> Damian Lillard? Now we many that in guy. Oregon know that guy right. uh, who who's a professional basketball player here in the state of Oregon with the Portland Trailblazers. Um, how has he helped you in business pursuits and growth as a person? Uh, more than business pursuits, uh, it's, it's kind of it's odd. You never think a, a younger brother could help a the older brother in business pursuits, but he's been in, in le levels of meetings and situations and contracts that I've never ever seen before. So mm -hmm. for him to go through and make decisions and be patient and be able to get a second and third and fourth opinion on things has been one of the things I've, I've learned from him. He, he's not quick to react. He's not quick trigger to make a decision, especially in business. And that's one of the things that uh, I value the most as far as what I'm doing because everything sounds sweet when it's for you you know what i mean but mm -hmm. it's all everything comes with something so you have to be good at understanding that it has to work two ways and be comfortable with it working the other way so i i think that's one of the biggest things in business i've learned from him since he's been a pro and then it's just competition man like he running off i gotta i gotta <laughs> do something you know what i mean right like, right and i'm not playing no more and for a while we would compete with Sports and I throw my touchdowns, but now it's like I, I want to impact the world. I want to impact people's lives. He's changing lives with his music. He's changing lives with what he represents from being a basketball player to mm -hmm. helping kids to how he represents himself, what he shows. Kids see how he represents himself, and it's right. not he's not buying jewelry and and throwing money in the club. He's mm -hmm. he's giving messages and giving back. So. He's a, he has a sense of community, and so do you. Yeah, exactly. Uh, when, it, when it comes down to that, it, but in different sectors, in different of, sectors uh, of that. And so, do you? You kind of bounce stuff off of each other in right. a way, right? And, and he's also allowed me to allow me to be helped with Adidas and stuff like that. Okay. And his brand. This there is it his is. Logo. Yeah, I like that. Three stripe. I black. like that. But I, like I mean, that. so outside of that, man, it's just supporting competition and just always raising the level of expectations. Yeah, he in continue, a sense of excellence, you know. Exactly. He continues to rise and set the bar higher. And and as long as he does that, we're going to be held to a higher standard. And 
it just helps everybody grow. So, well, I want to give a, give a, an opportunity to you, Houston, to um, first of all thank you for being on our show right. here for Appreciate all the time thank and you. really talking about your story because again I think here at the Fat Show we really delve into um, mentorship we develop we delve into what was the turning point in a person's career I mean you, we talk about their successes right, right. Um, and everybody has some level of a success but the, the thing that we always promote here is how did we get how do you get right. there um, and so we look at that so I wanted to give you a little opportunity in front of the camera to be able to talk talk about you know, and, and tell people about Team Lillard uh, and tell them why it's an important organization. Uh, you did tell a little bit about it, but what, you know, when you're talking about people that are watching this show, right. uh, especially kids that are thinking about possibly looking at development and mm -hmm. skills in football, give a chance to, to, to our viewers out there to tell them a little bit about you and, and that sense of that organization and why it's important to join you. Well, to the, um, to the parents out there, I know you guys wonder who's talking to your kids, who's helping your kids, what do they represent? And I think just from obviously my family name and the Lillard and what my brother and me and my family represent, we're gonna teach them the right ways how to be in life. We're gonna help them grow, hold them accountable academically, teach them how to have confidence, approach everything with the mindset of dominating it and just being real. We don't really come with nothing fake. We come in real and raw and we wanna grow. And as far as the players, man, y'all know what time it is, just come work and be real and be yourself. You know, we don't want you to come be a robot. We don't want you to come and think that your stuff don't stink. Like we all had success. We all graduated from college. We've all played professional and we just want to get better. So come with two ears and one mouth and ready to work. Great. Well, this is Kevin with The Fat Show. Kevin Men with The Fat Show where it is Lillard time on Hello. Team Lillard 7-on-7 seven seven football. Um, we do thank you so much, Houston, for joining thank our show. You. We appreciate all that you're doing here in the state of Oregon, but then also, too, when an aspect where you look at the goal of regionalizing right. uh, your brand. And so we appreciate that very much. So, again, thank you for watching. Uh, please tune in and please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, again, The Fat Show, where it's football the time. We talk about many different aspects when it talks about football and people uh, behind the scenes. So we thank you for watching and uh, have a great day. Love.